Hello, it's Mr. Kennedy again. Uh, for this lecture video, we're going to look at what happens after first contact. Um, so once again, make sure you watch the first lecture video and make sure you look at the welcome video before you watch this. Alright, early explorations. Um, a couple of reasons the first people are going to explore from Europe to Africa. Uh, one reason is a desire for more wealth. Uh, people want glory and gold. Uh, and there's also a religious aspect to this as well. Now, going along with the idea of wealth, um, people from Europe are going to be looking for goods. Uh, goods from Africa, goods from Asia, and they're almost going to visit North and South America by accident at first. Um, Europeans are really looking for a direct pipeline to African goods, and that does include slaves. And there's an actual economic system that develops where African leaders are going to get access to European uh, manufactured goods, and Europeans are going to get access to finished African goods as well as finished slaves. And it's really going to be Portuguese sailors as early as the 1400s that begin exploring the coast of Africa. And once other European nat nations figure out how much money Portugal is making from this exploration, they're going to start to jump in as well. But it's Portuguese explorers who are going to gain control of the, both the slave trade and the gold trade very early on in this exploration period. And for a time, Portugal was the strongest country in the world, believe it or not. Now, this European slave trade is going to take an existing African slavery system and turn it on its head. In traditional African slavery, um, slaves were provided some legal protections or treated as part of the family, and there was a way to gain freedom. But when the Europeans come in, it becomes much more about high volume and it becomes all about keeping perpetual slaves and there's no or very little legal protections. There's no way to gain freedom. European slavery is going to be based on race and for the first time different skin color is going to mean something. There are some African kings who are going to use this European slave trade to increase their power and to get rid of those that they, they don't want bothering them anymore. The most famous explorers are going to be the Spanish explorers. And typically when we think of explorers to America, we think of Christopher Columbus. Uh, spoiler alert, and I'm sorry if this you know, ruins anybody's childhood, but Christopher Columbus did not discover America. In fact, Christopher Columbus is one of the final explorers to actually make it to the United States and to Central America, North America, etc., etc. Christopher Columbus, he thought the world was round, but he thought that the world was much smaller than it was. Uh, he is an Italian explorer who more or less answers a newspaper ad where the king and queen of Spain are looking for somebody to go and sail the world for him. Christopher Columbus sails west and on October 12th, 1492, he lands on the island of San Salvador, which today is part of the Bahamas. And he thinks he's off the coast of China. He calls the native people he runs into Indians based on the continent of India. And he never actually realizes that he is off the coast of North America. He dies thinking he is close to China. That's right, Christopher Columbus believed that he was in Asia after landing in the Bahamas. Christopher Columbus leaves behind a very questionable liter, um, legacy, if you will. Um, he exploits the people. 
Christopher Columbus is responsible for the death of thousands, if not millions, and lots of death, lots of destruction left in his wake. We also have the conquistadors. You've got Hernan Cortez, who is going to meet the Aztecs in 1519. Henry Cortez is going to meet the leader of the Aztecs, Montezuma II. Uh, he's going to say, we are friends now, and then very shortly after, order his Spanish soldiers to kill hundreds of Aztecs while throwing a party. Francisco Pizarro is going to head south to Colombia and Peru. And in 1531, he's going to discover the Inca. And by 1536, he's in charge of the Inca. Now, what was this all about? Hernan Cortez was in search of gold. Francisco Pizarro was in, was in search of silver. Now, what's ironic is Cortez is going to find some gold. Pizarro finds the richest silver mines in the world. And Spain is rolling in the money. Problem is, though, that Spain had destroyed its own middle class. Much of the banking class in Spain was made up of Jews and Muslims. And after 1492, Jews and Muslims are banished from Spain to other countries, which means whatever money Spain brings in has to be paid to those that they owe money to. What Spain does do is they set up permanent settlements. Spain is going to set up settlements for permanent occupation. And we get the beginning of actual colonies in Spain. Now, the Spanish crown is going to keep control of these colonists. Most of the colonists are going to be male. And Spanish missionaries are going to be sent to the New World to forcibly convert to Catholicism the natives. And Spanish missionaries are going to do their best to destroy the native religions and native customs. Eventually, traders or explorers, if you will, from other countries are going to come as well. Uh, you have the French, you have the English, and you have the Dutch. The French, the Dutch, even the Swedish get involved. They're looking primarily to trade furs, and they're looking to use the waters of North America for fish. Eventually, France is going to establish a large permanent settlement the Dutch will have a decent sized settlement as well. Uh, the cities of Quebec and Montreal are, are going to become the largest French settlements outside of France. The Dutch are originally going to settle New Amsterdam, which is today New York. Some of the native groups become so dependent on this European trade that they give up their way of life and they begin to live and subsist off of European goods. The Native Americans, they have a desire for finished cloth, they have a desire for the metal goods the colonists are bringing in. The Jesuits are going to live amongst the local populations and convert them to Christianity, teach them English, teach them French, teach them Dutch, whatever the language might be. But by living amongst these native populations, the European Jesuits, the European priests, if you will, are also going to bring European diseases with them, smallpox being the most famous. You have the Colombian exchange that comes out of this, and the Colombian exchange is the transfer, both intentional and unintentional, of biological materials between the Europe and the Americas. And there's some very, very common things that we that we take for granted today. For example, potatoes. Everybody loves French fries. 
potatoes were originally a crop of the Andes in South America and they were discovered found to grow in cold wet climates and they were taken to Ireland and England and Germany corn we use corn every day corn is what our ethanol is made out of and gas is at least 10% ethanol uh, corn discovered in central Mexico taken to Europe and it revolutionizes the food industry in Europe uh, tomatoes for those of you who like Italian food you gotta thank the tomato for that if you're a fan of pizza thank you tomatoes well originally tomatoes were from the New World in fact in Italian the word for tomato is pomodoro and pomodoro means golden apple why did they call it a golden apple because they'd never seen one before and the apple was the closest thing they could get to it sugar sugar becomes a very important product or or crop of the new world this period of exploration happens at a time where the natural honeybee population of Europe starts to collapse sugar is discovered to be delicious and sweet and before you know it a whole market develops around sugarcane now the higher profits meant that you could have more money the more money was used to make bigger and bigger plantations the bigger plantations needed more workers and that was really the driving factor behind African slavery was that European landowners needed cheap labor now as we said before slavery existed um, but it was very very different in Africa it's used to punish criminals it's used for prisoners of war it's used for for debt settlement it was for a limited period of time but these slaves are being brought to these sugar plantations and they're going to be slaves forever they have no legal protections they're not treated as part of the household uh, they are slaves great example of how many slaves are brought to the new world Brazil by 1798 two out of every three people in Brazil were African slaves drinks are part of this Colombian exchange uh, if you are a tea drinker that was discovered to grow very well in Central America and it was brought to Central and South America where it was then turned into plantation crops and sent back to Europe same thing with coffee coffee was from the Middle East it was smuggled to South America where it was discovered it grew very very well and became one of the larger industries and then chocolate was a drink a medical drink used in Central America that now is considered a delicacy around the world and there's also diseases um, lots of diseases that we have every day were brought to the new world smallpox the flu measles mumps rubella all of those were diseases unknown to the new world there is no immunity to any of those and they decimate native populations uh, some places in the new world had over a 90 percent death rate from these diseases it is crippling uh, there is one disease though that's brought back to europe and that is syphilis syphilis was originally a new world disease that is taken back uh, one last thing one last exchange I don't have it up here 
But if you are a fan of barbecue, barbecue was originally a cooking style of Native Americans in the Caribbean. And what they would do, uh, they would take meat, put it on this lattice work, this, this um, container, if you will, made out of green leaves. And then they would put this meat that's on top of these green leaves over fire and they would smoke it. Uh, this technique was called bocan, and when it was translated into the French, it became bocanier. In English, it became buccaneer. And then in Spanish, it was known as barbacoa, which is where we get our word today, barbecue. So just an interesting little uh, tidbit for you if you ever wondered where the idea of barbecue came from. All right, so once again, you have your early European explorers who are going to be looking for wealth. Portugal is going to become the world leader in both the gold trade and the slave trade. Spanish colonists are really going to settle and be the first ones to make permanent holdings in the New World. And then we have this Colombian exchange along with slavery that are going to change the way the world operates and works. All right, so this video lecture, fairly short, to the point. They won't all be this short, so don't get used to it. But once again, I wanna start you out with an easy week. Uh, next week, we'll see what happens. But if you have any questions, let me know. And remember, all of your work for this week is due by 11.59 p.m. on June the 7th. So 11.59 p.m. June the 7th is when all the work for Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 is due. Good luck. Any questions, let me know, and we'll see you around. Bye-bye.